Hello everybody, we're back and this time it's uh, with a very special friend of mine. This is uh, Kyle Eastwood. You probably uh, heard that name before, Eastwood, you know. <laughs> He's the son of uh, the amazing Clint Eastwood. And uh, I actually had the pleasure, pleasure to meet Clint a long time ago. They used to have a jazz club on Lancashire Boulevard in LA called Dante's. And uh, Clint used to come down, he loves jazz, you know. And uh, one night he came, he was uh, with uh, Kyle and Allison, the daughter, he was a little kid, you know, was playing, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't know. So then that's how I met Clint. And uh, later on, one day he called me and he said, oh, uh, my son wants to uh, get some lesson on the bass. Uh, should he go to the uh, Musician Institute or whatever? I said, no, 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 send it to me, it'll be a lot better. So. I start giving him bass lessons, you know, and uh, upright bass and electric bass, and now he's uh, going all around the world touring. You know, he's actually touring even more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, I would like, uh, uh, you know, so you're meeting Kyle Eastwood right here, and uh, I would like to ask him a few questions to, uh, you know, to find out the way he feels about uh, the instrument and things like that. So. Uh, T tell me, what, what got you into actually playing the bass of uh, all instruments? Well, actually seeing you play was one of my initial... Uh, I'm so sorry. It, I'm yeah, so sorry. It was all your fault, yeah, man. I'm so, so sorry. I blame it all on you. Um, seeing you play, I mean, I was always interested in drums and bass, you know, and, uh, and music in general, but uh, I was kind of, I kind of wanted to play the drums a little bit, but... I couldn't really talk my mother into to buying me a drum kit, you know. So uh, yeah, does I um, I picked up uh, like an old like Fender copy electric cheap electric bass and just started kind of teaching myself. And um, then I kind of wanted to get serious about it, so uh, gave gave the master a call here. So, yeah. so well, that's, that's, and that's, we started working together, I guess, uh, late. 80s, I guess it was. Yeah, something like that. I don't even remember. Yeah, that's when your dad called me, you know, that's what... <laughs> because, I mean, the, the Musician Institute is a good place, you know, to, for people uh -huh. to go. But it's always better if you go to a place like that when you already kind of know how to play. Yeah. I think it's better because you're in the middle with a lot of people. And I feel better if I teach somebody, I can get him, uh, you know, special attention and it goes faster yeah. and all that. that that's what i think about well but you're a great you're a great teacher you know? oh, th so thank was, you very uh, much thank i was lucky lucky to lucky to have you and lucky to find uh, you it was thank an honor you. To, uh, to have studied under you for, uh, for that's, a long time <laughs> that's the advantage of being self-taught i was totally self-taught yeah. because when uh, uh when i was very young there was no like uh, electric bass lessons or things like that or even jazz bass yeah you know the only thing you could go you could go to the classical conservatory and they teach you how to play classical, reading the music and all yeah. that. But I started uh, uh, playing actu actu actually the acoustic bass myself yeah. and tried to learn listening to uh, Sam Jones and people like that and then I pick up the electric bass and the, that's how I did. So I have a view of it because yeah. I taught myself so that's why it's easy for me to give people the right you well, know, you thing great, to practice. You were a great practice, teacher. You you know, know, so uh, that's what it, it was a lot of fun to study with you and, uh, and progress very fast and you have a good way of, of teaching students you know, and, and, uh, and now t presenting tell me, it easily. You know. Tell me about uh, your touring and your band, the music you're playing and all that. How did, you, how did you find the musicians you have? You know, I like the music you're playing. For me it was like Lee Morgan. Yeah, yeah, well, it's definitely a big I, influence. I love, uh, I love that. So, but the, uh, tell me about all the musicians and all that. Well, mainly the musicians I've been playing with lately are quite a lot of London-based musicians, and uh, I mean, I spend a lot of time in Europe and uh, in, in France and, uh, and in England. So, uh, um, I met all of them living over there, and uh, so I, I picked some some really good young players. Most of them are a little bit younger than I am, even, but. Um, a lot of really good young players from around the scene in, in London, and uh, so I've kind of tried to keep the same band together because it was important for me to keep, you know, keep this, a group of musicians together and try and develop, you know, the sound of a band really. You know, because some of my favorite records are are from, like you said, Lee Morgan and uh, you know R. Blakey and the Jazz Messengers, and uh, of course Miles and Coltrane and all that stuff, but. But um, yeah, some of the, I, I wanted to kind of keep a, a band together, so that's kind of what I've been focusing on the last five, six years. Yeah, my favorite record at the time was uh, uh, 
Sidewinder. 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 I love it. And uh, so you got that sound. I love it. It's just like a, you really... Well, that was the music uh, I grew up hearing a lot. My, my parents used to listen to that music awesome. a, lot, you know? a lot. I mean, a lot of big band stuff and a lot of... A lot of you know Count Basie and Duke Ellington, but then also a lot of the Blue Note albums, you know, from from that period, the late fifties, early nineteen sixties. I think it's a great choice because nobody's really playing that. They, yeah, know, not so nobody. much. That's yeah, great. You but, uh, you're the only band that plays uh, you know that jazz, and you play that. That's the that's my favorite one. That's yeah, the, well, we're I mean, we try and <coughs> incorporate different styles. Yeah, of styles, course, of but course. But there's, there's but there's a big influence of that. Of yeah, that, it's, that it's there, great. Yeah. It's great. So what instrument are you using? Because well, you have, um, I show you playing with a, you have a, a, a kind of a cut off uh, uh, upright bass. Yeah, it's the, <laughs> yeah, it's the David Gage, uh, okay. David Gage who designed this bass in, in New York. It's kind of a travel, did, travel model. They didn't but. give you enough money to buy the whole bass? What yeah, is yeah, it's a kind of stunted growth um, acoustic <laughs> bass. But, uh, no, I just call it the airplane bass. Cause it's, yeah, it's, it's easier, uh, easier to carry. It's, yeah. too, it's too hard to travel with an upright, you know. And then the electric bass I play is um, is your design for the from the old Gibson. I don't know what's <laughs> Gibson slash Carvin slash No, no, it's funny because we were talking. I was with uh, ESP just uh, uh, before, and uh, my design that I did in 1986 was. Uh, uh, for Gibson, okay. yeah. and actually, uh, Rick Turner, who's the one who was in yeah. charge, was here. Yeah, yeah. It was funny today. We got all the people together, and uh, you're the one who has uh, that I know of, who has uh, like a couple of my uh, Gibsons. Yeah, I have a couple of the original yeah, yeah. designs. And uh, I was just saying the EPS. I gave him the, the Gibson, and they copied it, the same body and all that. Yeah, so I, I, I really saw love it's it. Quite, pretty close to I, the I old, really the love old it. One, yeah. I really love it. So. Yeah, well, so I got used to playing those, and um, and. Uh, I've tried other bases <laughs> since then, but uh, and people have asked me, "Oh, like you know, I can make a base for you," and, uh, but um, I, I keep going back to the to the old, yeah, because of the balance the best. and all that. Yeah, <laughs> so thank you, thank you. I, uh, so what, what I have of, you to blame for that too, I guess. <laughs> I what say. kind of amplifier usually you like to play with? Um, I use Phil Jones' amplifiers quite a bit. Um, I mean, I can't always get that when you're on the road. You sort of yeah, have yeah, to yeah, play yeah. what yeah. they give you, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Um, um, so I, I use one of Phil Jones' little heads, and then I and then sometimes and so you use whatever cabinet, cabinet that they, yeah, they give you. That but, makes uh, sense. Easier to carry but, around. Uh, yeah, he has a little lightweight two-channel yeah, yeah, two-channel head that I, I use. Know, it's so. not like when I started playing, it was like, oh my God, the heads of amplifier. Yeah, another really well, they've become a lot lighter now, so it's nice. It's nice you can. I just put the little head in my suitcase and <laughs> yeah, and yeah, off that, you that's go. the way, that's, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Know, so it took a while, uh, you know, for people to start designing. The first one who actually designed a small yeah. amplifier was Walter Woods. The Walter Wood. Woods, I remember that. I had one, that. Yeah. I had the little Walter yeah. Wood and all that. Those are and cool, though. I like those. He, he, had a, he, he was working for the NASA. NASA. Oh, so really? He, that's where he got that technology to do the three different uh, uh, transformers to yeah. make the, the to size make it so small. Yeah. Now everybody's got a little one, like a thousand watt. You've got something that's just yeah. like so small. No, it's, it's good to It's I mean, easier to carry Yeah, around. I mean, the old base amps were. were Crazy heavy, so it's yeah. It's and, uh, you know, I don't know if you remember the, the, those <laughs> MPEGs and all that. Oh yeah. my God! I have enough carry it. The bass is already a problem traveling around with it, anyways. I don't need yeah, to with carry a, around heavy yeah, amplifiers. For, so. Forget it, you know. So what is what is the, the the next step? Are you recording a new album? Um, I'm trying to. Yeah, I'm getting together a new project. Um, I was gonna try to arrange um, a bunch of film. Pieces, film music, you know, film oh, okay. film oh, themes to thanks. do for the band. So uh, yeah, that's right. Because you're doing then, some of the music for your dad's yeah. movies. Yeah. Well, was I was great. gonna maybe record some of the things I've written, and then then maybe some Ennio Morricone stuff, or some uh, you know some uh, Lalo Schifrin things, and or uh -huh. Henry Mancini and stuff like that. So uh -huh. I've kind of made a list of a bunch of film pieces that I'd like to do. So. I'm gonna try, and that's gonna be the next project. I'm Very good. Yes, yes. I remember. Actually, did some little bit for your dad for the movie, oh, for Unforgiven. You know? Yeah, yeah. And then you know, you I taught you, so you took over. <laughs> you took my gig. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> you no, know, it was great. You know, it's a, it's. I'm 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 glad. You know, he's got the. 
somebody that can write uh, some <laughs> nice music, especially that uh, I remember him playing the piano, you know. He played, yeah, well, he I've, I've worked on a few of his things, yeah. He comes and plays the piano a little bit and comes up with a little melody, and then, yeah. and then you have to fill in the, fill yeah, in the, fill the, in the yeah, gaps. Yeah, yeah that's, what for, <laughs> so, uh, that's what I did for, that's what I did on Unforgiven. Yeah. He played a little melody and I... So that's usually what, what I end up doing a lot of the time. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. very good, excellent. So yeah. I think uh, we're going to have uh, to, it's the time... I'm turning it over, went okay. out. So, uh, Good. So well, thank you very thank much. You, yeah. It's so nice to uh, to see you again. Yeah, all great the to time. see you, buddy. And, uh, yeah, thank keep you. Keep playing. You sounding marvelous. It was funny. You were playing at the baked potato one day, and uh, uh, Justin, the owner, is new. Yeah. And I come to Lee. I say hi, Justin. And Justin said, "Oh, that guy just sounds like you." <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. So the well, company. I guess the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Yeah, exactly. Now, I guess, so thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, <okay? laughs> Thank you.